Hey everybody, it's Katie from Bobby Hair Studio. Thanks for coming back. Today we're going to do a balayage touch up and a big chop for my client, Joe. I'm gonna show you how I updated her balayage and brightened her up to go from this to this. And I know it doesn't look like there's a huge difference, but it does actually make a decent difference to the client when they want something, you know, low maintenance, but they want it updated and they want it a little brighter. There actually is a pretty big difference to the client. So today I'm going to go into depth about what kind of foiling pattern I use, my formulas and my shadow root formulas and my cut. Now here we are starting with her cut. We're just doing a preliminary cut and what this does, it just gets rid of bulk that we're not going to need. And I always cut it an inch or two below our actual set point of where we want our hair to be in the end result. So I have some room to trim her up after I've done her color and washed her out. This makes sure that I'm not wasting time or product on her that she would end up having to pay for. So my clients do actually appreciate this because it also gives them the time and the appointment to get used to their new length, especially if you're doing a big chop like this. My lightener formula today is Schwarzkopf Blonde Me and 20 volume. When I'm doing like seven to nine levels of lift, I always make sure I only use one scoop at a time when I'm mixing up my bowls so that I don't time out my lightener and it loses power. I find with balayage, the most power and control that I have is with a Greek yogurt type consistency. So this is what that actually looks like and I'm using a soft bristle brush to do all my blending. So I'm going to be sectioning into three main sections today. I've made my first section along her parting and the back is going to be one large section where I'm going to brick lay the entire back. And the two sides are going to individually be their own and I'm gonna work up to the parting. I'm going to be doing a slice weave, slice weave pattern today going up horizontally towards the top of each section. You'll also notice that I am back combing every single piece and this is just so that I get some really beautiful blending and that not all my blending has to be done with drop roots and shadow tones. The slices will provide pops of brightness and the weaves will allow for a little bit of dimension to be still left in the hair. Keep in mind for any new hairdressers, if you're going to be doing a slice weave, slice weave technique, this is going to create a lot of blonding for your client. So if you'd prefer to have a little bit more of that natural contrast of her low lights in there, keep in mind that you'll want to have your slices be skinnier and your weaves uh, have smaller amounts of the weave go into the foil rather than the smaller amount being left out of the foil. My client here wants to be pretty blonde, so I am putting the majority of her weaves into the foils and I'm making sure my slices are pretty bold so she gets those big pops of blonde. Pay attention to how I'm using my brush as well. When I hold my brush horizontally, I'm allowing more pressure to go onto the hair, which causes better saturation from one end of the hair to the other, to the underside, I guess is what I'm trying to say. But then you may notice that when I turn it onto a more vertical direction, I am using that to blend upwards towards the root of the hair. This allows me to pinpoint the areas that I want to be lighter and essentially hand paint up little highlights going up the shaft of the hair. So as you can see, I'm essentially brick laying the hair all the way up to the top of the head. So I am just going to kind of skip ahead as you guys probably have the hint on how I'm going to be doing my foiling for the next little bit here. Now I did also want to show you something is when I get to the widest part of the head, of course I'm going to be brick laying, but once I start getting into an area where I can use a larger foil and hand paint on some highlights and give her more of that balayage effect, that's when I pull out my really, really big wide foils. I like to use the big papa foils from Framar because I can use them as one whole big foil for each piece in the back and not have to brick lay the entire back. These foils are great for a rooted balayage because they allow me to cover enough room and get close enough to the root to where I'm comfortable. And then if I want to get any closer, I'll just use a smaller foil and brick lay, or I will separate the hair in half like what I did here. So I'm still able to get pretty close, but I'm able to cover a lot of ground and a lot of space with these larger foils. 
as I get closer to the top, I'm going to be creating a teardrop effect with my shadow root. So I'm going to angle some of my painting on some of my slices, like you're going to see here. I'm angling some brightness up towards the face and leaving some depth here in the back, as you can probably see there. This makes sure that not all the sections look like they're just old grown out highlights, that there is a little bit of depth between different areas. And I'm doing the same thing on the other side. The crown area here will all be single foils. I'm not gonna bricklay them. I'm going to foil them and pull them all backwards. And for the most part, I'll be doing weaves for these so that I still get a bit of a shadow up near the top of the hair. I'll also be blending a little further down so that I don't have all the foils going up too high, creating a bit of a strong line near the top of her head. A lot of people find that they can just continue this all the way to the front of the hair if they wanted and make it essentially a really, really wide mohawk. Again, these Framar foils, the big papas, are really good for something like that. If you have a client who has a bunch of different parting, sometimes she parts it all the way on the left, sometimes she parts it all the way on the right, sometimes it's in the middle. You can do a mohawk parting with these foils if you want to wrap them over top the top of the head and make a really large mohawk section. This piece right here, I'm not bringing the highlights up very high. I'm leaving a nice teardrop shape in the shadow root. And the next piece, I'll be doing more of a weave and bringing the highlights up pretty high. This is what's gonna give us a really nice dimensional root, even though the roots are still gonna be pretty dark. As she washes her hair and the roots fade a little bit, these little highlights are gonna peek through and it's just gonna create a nice soft dimension in her hair. This is gonna give her a long time with her balayage without having to need it getting done again. These little teeny highlights between the slices are just there to soften up that root so it doesn't look like one big black chunk. Now I'm starting on her sides and I am again doing horizontal partings. What you'll need to notice in my foiling here is that I am taking a larger weave when I go near the front of the face and that creates a money piece in its own. So watch as I weave right here and you'll notice that there's a lot more hair that's towards the front of the foil, towards the front of her face than there is in the back of the foil with all of these pieces. This is a method that creates a money piece without actually having to section out your own money piece and do that on your own. This is just a two-in-one. I'm working in horizontal still, but as you can see, I'm following a little bit of the direction of her face and moving up in a slight diagonal as I'm going so that I have a little bit of wiggle room when I get near her parting. If there's some pieces that I wanna leave out or some pieces that I wanna keep in, I'm just kind of going by what my eyes see as I'm going.
Overall, both of the sides, I'm essentially foiling very similar to how I did the back. Some pieces I might wanna make a little blonder and some pieces I might wanna have a little bit more dimension. It's all just kinda of how you feel it needs to be as you're working. So I'm not really gonna show you the other side because it's the exact same as this side, but uh, I'll show you what she looks like with all of her foils in. Here she is with like 800 pounds of foils in her head. She's processing nicely and we're about to get ready to wash her out. And here is my lovely client all washed out. She's got that nice brass tone that we're about to tone, but first we're gonna do the shadow root. My shadow root formula today is Schwarzkopf Vibrance 6-63 and six volume. So if you don't know what 6-63 is, it's a level six, so kind of a medium brown, and it's got a chocolate ash formula. And a three in Schwarzkopf is actually a green tone, which fights, you know, kind of reddish, orangish tones in the hair. And with a lot of naturally dark hair clients, they can lift to be pretty orangey. So something with a three in there is gonna help me fight that brass and make her a more ashy, soft color up in the root. Find that if I apply my foils horizontally, then I like to apply my shadow root vertically. It allows me to get a little bit of a softer root in there because oftentimes people don't section and part their hair vertically. If anyone's gonna part their hair into like a half up, it's gonna go horizontally. So that's when you'll see where the shadow root likes to make strong lines. So if you do a vertical shadow root, I find that it helps to blend it a little better. Now I'm applying her blonde toner everywhere and I'm using Schwarzkopf Vibrance 7-4, which is a beige, 8-11, which is an ash cendre color, and 9-55, which has a champagne gold color in it. And this keeps the hair shiny and looking bright, so she's gonna still be a really beautiful light beige blonde. I'm trying to blend it a little bit with her root color, but I'm not really trying to mix them together too much. So that's why I'm using my fingers to kind of blend slightly between the two. This isn't the strongest toner in the world as we're still trying to keep her to a nice light beige color. I'm not trying to super ash her out, but this is gonna be a color that's really complimentary on her skin and it's gonna be great for summer. In just a moment, you'll get to see her finished result because I'm gonna wash her out. And here she is. She's all finished up, as you saw earlier. This isn't a huge transformation, but she is a lot blonder and she has a really soft root so that when she washes it over the next six months, these teeny tiny foils perk up in the top and it creates a nice soft blend. I hope you guys liked today's video. Remember to like and subscribe. Thanks so much, guys.